I am all for supporting small businesses, but there is such blatant negligence in the pink sauce situation that I can't support that. That's it, that's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda, you're watching Small Entertainment, and today we're talking about pink sauce, the viral for all the wrong reasons sauce from TikTok. I am not eating or trying the pink sauce. I do not have it with me. Why? I believe that Carly P is actually based in Florida or Miami specifically, and I'm based in California. We are basically having record heats both here in California and just across the country right now, across the world, I think. Gotta love global warming. And so because of that, and because these uh, sauces are not being shipped with what looks like any form of refrigeration, I think that it's not safe for people within Florida to be getting them, let alone someone on the opposite coast, i.e. me. I therefore did not order pink sauce and I will not be trying pink sauce. This is not an I tried it so you don't have to. I'm just talking about the situation because I think there's a lot happening with it. All of this was avoidable, obviously. We're just gonna get right on into it. And I'm wearing a pink sweatshirt uh, because I, I wanted to, you know, be on theme. I was not shown pink sauce from Carly herself. I was shown the responses to pink sauce. I was shown the, hey, why are people spending $20 on a sauce that this woman makes in her kitchen? Why are you guys doing this? You guys are gonna get sick. Look at the uh, nutritional labels and all the issues here and all of that. That's what I started getting. I did not see them prior to that. What is pink sauce? I wish I could fully tell you. Carly P or Chef P herself does not fully describe the taste. Uh, she just keeps saying that it has its own taste. If you gotta try it, you gotta buy it, you know? I mean, I guess you could argue that no one really shares how things taste, but I mean, when you're trying to sell something like a sauce that's supposed to enhance food, a good way to market it is a buy the taste. Do you think there's a way to market sauce without, you know, cheating yourself, because I'm assuming that's kind of why she's not disclosing the uh, the flavors themselves. A lot of things I've heard is sweet, tangy, and uh, salty, I think. So the ingredients based on an infographic on the website itself, it says dragon fruit, sunflower seed oil, honey, garlic, and chili. And so that's where the color is really coming from is supposedly uh, the dragon fruit. So on the pink sauce website, it says pink sauce. See what the hype is all about. So pink sauce goes around. Some people start buying it because of that. It gets picked up in the algorithm and starts getting pushed out to more people. More people are like, hey, what are you doing? What is this? What is happening? You're gonna get people sick. Uh, so people start looking at the labels more. People start looking at the ingredients more and people start looking at how she's shipping them. And then that's where it's gone now because it's gone essentially viral. The phrase that I've seen thrown around is that this was a small businesswoman who got thrown into the national spotlight and therefore national scrutiny. And that is the issue here is that people are dogpiling. Some people have been saying that it's because Chef P is a black woman and that that's why this is happening because uh, black women are expected to be three times better than everyone else and held to a higher standard. I am not someone who can comment or disagree with that in any capacity. So I'm not going to. I will say is that I, for across my videos, when dealing with food or with a small business or anything in general, I think there are standards that have to be upheld regardless of small business, startup, independently owned, major corporation owned. There are standards that need to be upheld when someone is consuming something because you have a higher risk of harming someone if something goes wrong. And so I personally believe that when food is involved, there already needs to be a higher, higher standard expected. And so the small business aspect of it, I don't think is the issue here. The issue here I think is the uh, shipping nationwide. I think that right off the bat is a problem from the jump. Though I've kind of touched on, you know, food safety and flavors and, you know, uh, the responsibility you take as a business owner or a company when you are dealing with someone's money. I am newly <laughs> impassioned talking about food safety after the Daily Harvest situation. Um, I covered that previously. And I also had uh, Bill Marler, who is an attorney, the food safety attorney, who is representing, I believe, over 170 people now in a case against Daily Harvest who have been affected and harmed by the Daily Harvest French lentil and leek crumbles. Allegedly, don't sue me. We covered a lot about food safety. The requirements for food safety and all of this stuff. I guess because of all of that and because of myself, I'm much more critical about 
food safety in general, because there's a lot that can go wrong with food. And sometimes it's random. Sometimes it's out of your control. Like you get something and then, you know, somewhere else down the line, something was infected or contaminated. And you're, though you have things in place to uh, deal with that, it wasn't dealt with that. But then you have things that like there, there was no like a uh, cleansely wash, like with cantaloupes. And then now there's a listeria outbreak, you know, like there's, there's, st- <laughs> if I think about it too hard, my brain explodes. My point is, is that when you were dealing with selling food to customers that someone's going to consume, there has to be a higher standard of care put into those items. Forget just dealing with people's money, you're dealing with people's health now. And so there is a higher standard expected, and I don't think that that's wrong to expect that higher standard. And plenty of small businesses operate under out of their houses and operate out of their kitchens. I think that that all falls under cottage law. Today, all 50 states in the District of Columbia have cottage food programs, which allow residents to sell baked goods and other shelf stable, non potentially hazardous foods directly to consumers. Okay. My point is like, there's danger in something being made in a factory. There's danger in something made in facilities. There's danger in something made in the home and sold to the public. And therefore there does need to be a standard of care, regardless of where the food and items are being made and produced. Some of the video clips on Chef P's TikToks uh, were concerning to people. Like there was one where I believe she's making uh, the blenders of items on the counter in what looks like a kitchen. So that's where people are thinking, okay, she's making this in our kitchen. Nutritional facts. The original one is still on the um, website, has not been updated. Uh, I believe the new one was made two days ago. So nutrition facts, 444 servings per container. See, right off the bat, I feel like you need to have more information. Like down here, it says, see what the rave is about. Material shippings and returns, dimensions, care instructions. These are drop down menus and there's no information on any single one of them. I think all around this product was launched way too quickly. More work needed to be done before you started selling to even just the state of Florida, let alone nationwide, which I don't think there's anything wrong with launching in one state only in your state of operation. I believe that's what happened uh, with Square Eats, which is another company that I reviewed um, that was a startup that I don't recommend buying. They weren't good. I do believe that uh, one of the issues I had when trying to order the items is that they were selling to the Miami area only initially, and then they went nationwide and therefore I was able to buy them. And I'm assuming that that's because they were having either a production issue and they were trying to figure out, you know, the actual cost of production and, you know, cost of shipping and all of that, which I don't think there's anything wrong with doing a test launch or a beta launch, I guess. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. And also I'm assuming they were having issues with figuring out refrigeration. And when the items came to me across the country, the items were cold. They're the, I believe dry ice was used at the time. I don't remember off the top of my head right now. It's been almost a year, but the items were, you know, packaged and stored properly for shipment. That's not happening here. Originally they were just shipped, literally wrapped in shipping bags. Like the bottles themselves were just wrapped in shipping bags with no added protection from anything for the bottle, let alone the ingredients inside the bottle itself. Um, and now they're being shipped out of in boxes, which it looks like there's no space for refrigeration of any sort in the box either. That's not okay with any food product, but especially something that contains milk. One of the ingredients in this product is milk. And I'm assuming it's not the only ingredient that's milk because there's uh, the color is super vibrant and also the color is changing. I'm assuming this is lighting. The color is very a vibrant, hot, pink. And then in other photos of the actual item being used, uh, the color is changing. And if that's because of ingredients changing, that needs to be conveyed to your buyers. So I believe this is actually what's on the entirety of the back of the bottle, or at least this is what's in the box or something associated with the bottle. Our mission to excite your taste buds with flavor and thrill you with our creativity. Wow. I don't think I could have said that any more white. Nowhere on here does it say refrigerate after opening. So the website label does not say please refrigerate. The actual old label on the bottles does in fact say please refrigerate on the very bottom. The nude labels that are in the TikTok, it does look like it says refrigerate. Please refrigerate or must refrigerate. There was another user um, who was trying the pink sauce and I believe they got an early shipment or they bought it or something. She says in a different TikTok that she bought it. Comments were saying, people are saying it tastes better when it's refrigerated refrigerated, which is, I assume means she just had it in her cupboard or on her counter. All right, y'all. So it is currently the next day. I just made myself an at-home power bowl and, um, I refrigerated my pink sauce. So it's cold. Um, and I'm going to put it all over this power bowl and I'm going to try it. So y'all said it would be different if I put it in the refrigerator. Yikes. So ingredients here, water, 
sunflower seed oil, raw honey, distilled vinegar, garlic, patea, pink Himalayan sea salt, less than 2% of dried spices, lemon juice, milk, citric acid, contains sunflower seed oil, milk, may contain soy eggs. The word vinegar in distilled vinegar is misspelled on the label. The new nutritional label is in the TikTok. I want to start off by saying, number one, my apologies. I'm only human. I'm not perfect. She says the phrase, I am only human. I'm not perfect. It's not about being human and making mistakes when, um, again, there's feud safety involved and uh, people's health involved when someone's buying your product and consuming your product. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with people being upset. And and I, I again, I see people being like, you were the one who spent $20 on a bottle of pink sauce from a person on the internet. And you know what? Make your own choices, have your own opinions. But I just, I always think that's so stupid when people get mad at like the buyers, because again, there are plenty of people who are like, oh, a small business, yeah, I'll support you. I like your vibe. I like how you're you're marketing yourself. I do believe she is a chef. She's sewing great videos of food, it looks like in Miami. I'm assuming she made it. Looks great, I wanna try it. If you've uh, been following Chef P for a bit and then you're like, oh, Chef P came out with Pink sauce, I wanna try the pink sauce. I like this creator. I'm sure if I came out with, oh God, sorry, I was gonna say Amanda Juice and then I realized that <laughs> that sounds really bad. If I came out with something tomorrow, there's at least a handful of you that would probably try it um, because you know I do think an audience is one step down from a cult um, until you know you just push it, that extra nudge forward, which we're working on, but you know, if you then eat it and then there's scrutiny, then obviously I am, you know, gonna deal with the fallout of something bad happening if I gave you a food product that I, you know, half-assed, that would be on me. I have no real desire to do something like that. So obviously I'm not going to do something like that, but it, it, it's not surprising to me that people bought this one to just support a small business or to support someone that they like, you know, someone whose vibe they like, you know, that that's not uncommon. We have a team, things happen. The grams got mixed up with the serving size. It was a mistake. We fixed the issue. You guys will not be receiving pink sauce bottles with the bad label. So she's saying that the serving size and the uh, bottle amount, the grams that were in the bottle got mixed up on the label. That's something that should have been caught. That should not have been then printed on labels and sent out. You don't just get nutritional labels, decide that they're correct, and then put them on bottles and send them out. If someone comes back and says, oh, well, she didn't know that it was wrong, that's something you should know. That's your product, that's your food that you are sending to people. That information should be correct. That should be vetted, triple, and quadruple checked. There's mistakes and then there's just, again, negligence in this situation. Because if it is something like, oh, we didn't know that it was switched, why did you not know that the nutritional labels on your bottles, on your website, on your product, which by the way, on the website, it still is the wrong nutritional label. This was posted two days ago now. That should be updated. The new information should be on there. This is a small business, y'all. This is a small business that is just moving really, really fast. We are working to try to get the price mark down on the pink sauce. I want to also say I appreciate y'all for supporting me, for spending $20 per sauce to help us to produce it because the ingredients are not cheap. Okay, thank you for buying the sauce and supporting me so that we can produce it because the ingredients are not cheap. Okay, someone's gonna say that it's shitty of me to say that you shouldn't be taking in orders that you can't fill right off the bat, but there's a reason that people do pre-orders and pre-sales, and it is to raise money for product so then they can fill out the products. And people who do pre-sale pre-orders, they get the product, but that's where the ingredients come in. You don't kind of start selling before you have the money for the products. If you're having difficulties getting suppliers or figuring out costs and all of that, that's why, again, a smaller launch, a local launch is better than nationwide and just trying to go zero to 3000. I've seen a lot of businesses and obviously a pink sauce is not the same thing as like a restaurant, but I've seen a lot of restaurants crash and burn because they didn't have enough money set aside to put into the business at the very start. And the same goes here. You should have a chunk of money, a nest egg directly associated with your business. 
uh, because business, it's not just spend money to make money. Things are expensive and doing things right and safely are not cheap. And the same goes here. If the items are not ready, if you don't have stock ready to go and sell out, then that is a problem. Filling orders as they come in is not a bad thing when it's on a smaller scale, but you're dealing with now nationwide orders is my understanding. My point is if you don't have like a starting amount to put into your business, to have a starting stock, and then you, as the business is going, then you kind of pay yourself, put the money back into the business, put the money back into your team, money back into research, X, Y, and Z, producing more product, all of that. That That's, that's one thing. It's another thing to like cash in, cash out, okay, now we'll make the product because we got X amount of orders and we have to fill these orders so now we have to do the product, you know? Yes, we are following FDA standard. However, we are currently in lab testing. We are in lab testing. Once we go through lab testing, we will be able to pitch to stores to put the pink sauce in stores. And we're so excited about that. The fact that it's technically not up to standard for stores means that it's technically not up to standard for human consumption, in my opinion. And the fact that you are sending things out while you are still in lab testing, this could be a wording thing. It could be, we are continuing to do testing. Um, that is one phrase. Um, and that I, a lot of companies continue to do testing once they launch because they want to make the best product possible. And so as money comes in, they have more money for R and D. And so that can continue to go into, I'm sure research and development is not the phrase to use one with food products. I'm sure just testing. I think that's probably right, but you know, products change over time and that's not uncommon. But when you say we are still in lab testing, that implies that the testing, no testing has been concluded if not started. And therefore it is not, uh, up to snuff, therefore not FDA compliant, therefore not safe for consumption or at the very least shipping out of the state. I, I think that comes down to everything. The very least, the shipping that I saw, the video clips of her shipping things out, which I love girl boss videos. I, I am a sucker for it. I love seeing girlies with like, look at me going to the post office and they just have like a cart full of all their little orders for their store. I love those videos. Those are so fun for me. They're just like scratching the little happy bit in my brain. But this, when I know that there is a product containing milk inside of this, that concerns me that I know definitely should be refrigerated as it's shipped out. And the fact that this video doesn't go on to say anything about refrigerating orders moving forward stresses me the F out. It just does. A different video she is posting from inside her facility, I believe, for making the pink sauce. And it does seem to be some form of a garage, which again, if it's compliant, it doesn't matter the location technically. But yeah, these are one of the videos that I'm talking about. I'll put it on the screen. And it's just a bunch of boxes stacked on top of each other with the shipping labels, which I know have just been sitting there. It's hot here. I'm sure it's humid and hot and sucky in Florida right now. I'm sure it's uncomfortable. I'm sure these sauces should not be sitting out. Nothing should be sitting out in this heat, let alone something with a milk product in it. There's another footage of her packing some of these boxes uh, and shipping them out. And again, I usually like these videos, but this sauce is just literally sitting on the counter and it looks like 900 bottles potentially. The fact that none of this is refrigerated for any of this time, I don't think this is safe to consume. And again, the color is changing throughout various photos. Here it looks more slightly darker than this. <laughs> so yeah, this was a uh, July 1st is when this all went on sale, it looks like. Oh, they she did do a pre-sale, okay. Okay, only 100 units for the first drop. So 100 times 20 bucks, that's good chunk of money. Yeah, 2000 bucks for the drop. I mean, I wonder if that, that'd probably cover ingredients, wouldn't it? Or at least a drop or two. So this is from 620. So this is before the pre-order, before the first drop. And it does look like she is quite literally looking, working in a kitchen and she is pouring the oil into a blender with what looks like cloves of garlic. But in the bin next to her, there is a white mixture next to her and none of the ingredients list would dictate that. Even the milk being blended in a certain way would not, get that consistency. And so some people have speculated that that might be mayo. If it's not a vinaigrette, mayo is probably the main ingredient. Now that's a little bit different when you're talking about companies. Non-vinaigrette dressings use either mayo or mustard is because it acts as a binding agent. A lot of times you get like a balsamic vinaigrette. If you let it just sit there, it's gonna separate because it's oil and vinegar, it's not gonna mix well. Even if you use like an immersion blender, it'll separate. Which is what makes the texture of this sauce so weird. 
Now, you could point to the honey and say that that's the binding agent. But the thing is, the pitaya is what gives it that color. Pitaya is just dragon fruit. If you were to use honey as your binding agent and just honey, it wouldn't be quite as dark as the fruit itself, but the honey would darken it. It wouldn't be this light. Also, if you were using enough honey to actually bind the ingredients, it would be thicker than this. You see something that looks an awful lot like mayo. And if you look at the ingredients list, there is nothing that looks like this listed here. Even if this is not mayo, at the very least, she is using something that's not here to give it that particular color and consistency. Wanna give the vibrant or that opacity that we are seeing without some form of a white base. It's like using a white coat on your nails before you put a neon coat on top of it to get the brighter color of your nail polish. I know I shouldn't be comparing nail polish to food, but I'm trying to explain the color differentiation and all of that. Basically, they're saying that yes, something like a, a wider base like a mayo would make sense. Even with the duller color, something like that would make sense. That being said, there's no mayo listed in the ingredients list, which does imply that if mayo is being used, then there is potentially hiding of ingredients from the actual ingredients list of what's in the food. And that's not okay. If you're not being clear about what's actually in the product or the proper nutritional value of the product, that's not safe for anyone because you need to know what's in your food. It's not just like for people with dietary restrictions and all of that, like there's things that people cannot eat for safety reasons. And again, you shouldn't be eating this. If it's shipped across to you and there's no refrigeration, that's not safe to consume. Some per people are showing or seeing that there is uh, someone got it and the bottle was like puffy and it was like pressurized when they opened it because something had gone sour inside the bottle. Some people are saying that because of oil and garlic, if it's not processed properly, it can form botulinum toxin, I believe, um, which is basically a poison <laughs> that is not good to consume, should not be eaten because we are in a heat wave. The list of things I'm concerned about for pink sauce, the bottom of the list is not telling me what it tastes like. Like that's the bottom of the list because I wasn't concerned about what it tastes like. I'm concerned about people getting food poisoning, but some people have been saying that it tastes like ranch, but not really. We've talked about, you know, my concerns about this. I do think there was a way to launch this in a way that was safer. Um, I do think that something like a tasting, like, hey guys, I'm trying out this uh, sauce, new new sauce. I, it does look like you are a chef. I do believe you are a chef. Some people were speculating that she's not. I do believe that Chef P is actually a chef. It does look like you were doing like little sample tests and things like that. That's great. One of the things that people are pointing out is that there's no preservatives in the sauce itself, which again is causing an issue with the um, traveling. There needs to be refrigeration and shipping, but I just think that you don't even have to worry about that if you launch locally. And yes, you can still do overnight and all of that, but and you should still probably have refrigeration, especially if you're doing local with Florida, with the heat and all of that. And then again, if you, if you say like, oh, we can't afford to do that right off the bat, then you don't do that. You don't do it at all. You know, you sell locally at like farmer's markets and things like that at the start. That, that's, that's what you do. Um, you don't do shipping at all. I know there's like the, the dream of going big and all of that. I think a lot of people have that, but starting small, the humble beginnings of that, I think is the safest option in this scenario. If you're having difficulties with affording the ingredients, then you are obviously having difficulties with affording the proper transport methods to make things safe. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't think it's inherently bad to start something with launching online. I do think that it was a mistake from the bat to launch nationwide and not starting literally within the Miami area or the Fl the Hollywood, Florida area. Cause I believe that's where you started. I don't know the difference between the two. I'm from California. Okay, so it's like North of Miami that, yeah. Yeah, the Miami, yeah, okay. You could do like Fort Lauderdale to Miami area, boom, start there. I know it's a lot of space to cover, but I think that if you start there, have a more reasonable stock on hand and figure out what one you need to do, the lab testing needs to have been done. I'm assuming that something was done, I'm hoping. I'm hoping for you that something was done and was completed prior to this. Maybe not the official FDA testing, but something needs to have been completed because I do think a lawyer is required. <laughs> I need to know if somebody was watching her live. I need to know if this is true. Because what the fuck? This pink sauce situation is crazy. I, I think safety wise for yourself, protecting you and your brand, I think you need to have a lawyer on hand. Do you think launching locally early first would be a good start? Figuring out 
ingredients, costs, and all of that first. I think also refrigeration in the packaging. The entire step of the way refrigeration, because you're dealing with milk products, whether you're being entirely uh, open about the ingredients themselves or not, you have disclosed that there is milk in your, in, in your product. That needs to be refrigerated from start to finish and kept cold the entire time. Same goes with, um, I think, a lot of the other ingredients that are being dealt with. Um, I'm not familiar with the whole oil, garlic mixture, botulinum toxin thing. I'm not familiar with that. I'm not, I'm, I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> this whole thing, I'm a YouTuber. But still, um, I, I think that there needs to be proper care taken the entire step of the way, regardless of small business or not, startup or not corporation or not. Care needs to be taken when products are being ingested. That's the same thing we are seeing with the situation with Daily Harvest, which I will continue to bring up because I don't want that to fall by the wayside despite the uh, fast-paced nature and the short attention span of our media because of TikTok. I do blame TikTok for that. I think it's given us manufactured ADHD, but still. I do wish you the best, Chef P. I hope you get this sorted out. I won't be trying it unless we get things sorted out. I do think that there's maybe ingredients that you're not being clear about. That's not okay. The refrigeration that needs to be, uh, the fact that that's not even being considered, I think is like, even now on the new label, it says keep refrigerated. Are you shipping it with refrigeration? Cause you put it on the label, you know, like that step one, you know, I don't know if this is good. I don't know if you've got something here, but I think you, there's a lot of course correcting that needs to be done before you send out any more orders at all. And I know that sucks. I know that's a cost. I know that's a loss, but that's how business works. And again, you're dealing with people's health. This is not okay. What happens if the you finish your FDA testing and uh, they decide it's not a safe facility and that you've fell through a lot of things or that it's not safe for food consumption. What's your plan? Are you going to handle the recall? Because there's food here. That's where the lawsuit would come in. I don't think this is safe to consume if you are outside of the Florida area. If you're outside of the Miami area, I don't think it's safe to consume. Please use your good judgment if you have the pink sauce. But let me know down below what you think. Did you get pink sauce? Did you hear about pink sauce? Is this the first you're hearing about the pink sauce situation? Is the only pink sauce you're familiar with the tubby custard from the Teletubbies? Uh, because I kept seeing that joke everywhere. Some people were like, hey, new sauce dropping. And they were just using like blue paint which I do think is kind of funny. Reminder, I have a podcast, the Swell Shenanigans podcast. Like I said, I did an interview with Bill Marler about the Daily Harvest situation. Uh, that'll be linked down below if you wanna check that out. I have merch, like that mug back there, working on trying to get some new designs figured out. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you also like to support my Patreon, I'll be down below. If you like to follow me on social media, they will be up here. And that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. See, this is kind of an interesting situation because I do try and make sure that like you guys ask questions before you buy something. You know, I do, well, I would like to hope that you, like at least some of my videos are like kind of encouraging you guys to become educated consumers and ask questions before you spend money on something. But at the same time, I do think that it's like not fair to just kind of put it all on like, why are you, why did you spend $20 on a pink sauce? Thank you, Audrey, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crash PC, China, Devion, David, Dirty One, Dawn, Elliot, Evan, Eric, Beckless, Hopeless, Incognito, Jack Array, Joe, John M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lise, Lise, Matt, Matt, O, Matthew, S, me, Lauren, Michael, Michael, Jane, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skyler, Simon, Tosh, and Timothy, Tom, Wendy, William, Zendry's Wink.